if you invest on a risky stock uh, with probability 0.6, you're going to win uh, $4 for every dollar you invested. So your total becomes $5. Again, given that you invested a dollar. However, if it is a risky uh, with probability 0.4, sorry, uh, you lose your dollar. All right, and so your uh, your one dollar investment becomes zero dollar. All right, uh, so be careful. What we care about is the decision maker's final wealth because he's expected you to. Uh, I'm sorry, his von Neumann Morgenstern utility function, uh, utility of W is equal to LMW, and here W is the realized wealth, the realized final wealth. And so uh, th these numbers are what I care. I don't care how much uh, additional money you got or how much you lose. What I do care is about what's going to be your final wealth for each dollar uh, you invested. All right. So therefore, W is uh, the out as an outcome, either five dollars or zero dollars if you invest on risky stock, and it's one dollar uh, for sure if it is uh, invested on bond. Well, here this uh, decision maker is doing the following: he's sort of distributing the risk with X percent. So X is uh, a number between zero and one. So with X percent of his wealth. He's investing on risky stocks, and therefore, with one minus X percent uh, 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 or share of his uh, wealth, he makes the investment on bond market. So, <clears throat> what's going to be a final wealth? Uh, we need to calculate the expected utility uh, of this individual. So here. Uh, you have to be careful about, remember, the expected utility is basically probability times utility of wealth, right? And uh, so the wealth can be a bunch of different things. And so this probability is basically the probability of uncertain event. So here I have only uh, sort of two events in a sense, right? Uh, mutually exclusive. So this is one of the events. This is the outcome of one of the events. This is the outcome of the other, uh, the, 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 the remaining event or event two. So let's call this event one or scenario one, event two, where under event one, uh, your $1 investment becomes $5 and event two, it becomes uh, $0. And these are the probabilities, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, oops, 0.4, I'm sorry. So what I would like to do, I would like to calculate the uh, final wealth, the realized wealth of this decision maker under these two events, okay? So, well, be careful. Uh, he has an, a stock investment uh, X share and one minus X on the, uh, the government bond. All right, so here the question doesn't give it, give it us, but let's suppose A is the initial wealth of the decision maker. All right, it may or may not play a role. Uh, so basically that means he, the decision maker, has initially A dollars to invest. All right, so that means... AX dollar is going to be invested on stock. So A, you can think of A like hundred dollars, thousand dollars, a million dollars. And A times one minus X, therefore, so the total wealth is, total initial wealth is A itself, is invested on bonds. Agree? So if you <clears throat> invest on bond this much, at the end, how much wealth you're going to get. Remember, for each dollar investment, you're getting a dollar. So therefore, if you're investing A times 1 minus X dollars on bond, well, you're going to get A times 1 minus X dollars uh, uh, wealth. However, if, you know, from the stock perspective, you're investing A X dollars. And so $1 is becoming $5. So A X dollars is going to become five times AX in under event one. All right. And under event two, it's going to be basically zero times AX. 
meaning under event one, uh, you are basically uh, making 500% uh, 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 revenue, but here you're losing your entire money. But don't forget, this is not the realized wealth. I'm sorry, realized final wealth. Well, why is that so? Well, because regardless of the event, some part of your money was invested on bond, right? So therefore your realized final wealth under event one is gonna be 5ax plus this guy, a1 minus x. And in this case, it's gonna be, I mean, under event two, your final wealth is gonna be zero plus a times one minus x. So this is the realized final wealth under event one, meaning if everything goes nice, you make profit. And this is gonna be your final wealth. And this is uh, your final wealth if things do not go well, meaning you basically lose all your investment on uh, in, in stock market. So now when I want to calculate expected payoff, what I have to do, the probability of this event, which is, so expected utility is the following. The probability of event one, which is 0.6 times utility of this final wealth, which is 5ax plus a1 minus x, all right? I'm gonna simplify those things later. Plus, with probability 0.4, I have this final wealth. So it's u of, it's just a1 minus x, okay? So this is the expected utility. So for this question, I think the most important part is uh, writing this expected utility. And once again, the key is the following. When you read the question, you have to determine how many uh, possible, I mean, what is the uncertainty here? Well, the uncertainty is about uh, how much money you're gonna get at the end of your risky stock investment. And so there are two possibilities. I basically uh, distinguish the p potential outcomes. And so I call it event one. I mean, you can call it as you wish. And then event two. Uh, in this question, there's only two possible events. And so under event one, I basically write down what this decision maker's final wealth, realized wealth will be. What is that? So final wealth means initially he had a dollars but he divides it into uh, two different investments uh, by x and one minus x. And then at the end, um, I mean, I'm under event one, some of this money will be multiplied by five, but some of it will be just, uh, you know, kept the same. And so this is the final wealth realized under event one. In event two, the realization is the following, some of your money is gonna become zero. All right? But the sum of it, where you invested on bond, is going to be preserved. So this is the realized final wealth uh, under event two. Well, then the expected utility is simple. The probability of the event times your utility out of uh, the realized final wealth uh, under, under this event, and so on. So let's simplify it. It's going to be... So if you simplify this, uh, it's, by the way, the utility is ln. So it's 0.6 ln, uh, this is a plus, this is gonna be ax minus ax plus 5ax, so it's 4ax uh, plus 0.4 ln a minus ax. All right, so the question was, what is the optimal uh, x for this decision maker? So what is the optimal choice? Maybe he will prefer to invest his entire money on bond, which means X is equal to zero, or he will maybe prefer to invest his entire money on stock, meaning X is gonna be equal to one, or maybe X is gonna be some, somewhere in between zero and one. We'll see that. So, but what does that mean? Or how do we find the optimal X? Well, simple, it's the X that maximizes the expected utility, meaning you have to solve the first order condition. So take the partial derivative with respect to expected utility, uh, with respect to x, I'm sorry, set it equal to zero and solve for x. So let's do it. Uh, so here, 
if you take the, remember, if, if I have a function, something like ln, I don't know, uh, d plus uh, cx, and I'm taking the partial derivative with respect to x, we know that this is the derivative of inside, which is c, divided by the, the inside term, d plus cx. All right, so just uh, remember this. That's the only information you probably need for this. Uh, sort of uh, to, to solve this equality. So therefore, del eu divided by del x is equal to the following term, uh, point zero uh, times the derivative of this guy with respect to x is 4a divided by a plus 4ax plus point four derivative of this guy is minus a divided by a minus ax. So set it equal to zero, all right? Um, so what is that equal to? So if I send this guy to the other side, um, so what I'm gonna have is the following. So I'm gonna cheat I, instead of writing it again and again. So this is equal to, but this minus is gonna be plus, all right? So be careful about that. So this a and this a will cancel out. This four and this four will cancel out. I'm, I'm gonna have point one here. This point one and point six is gonna cancel out. So I'm gonna have only six here. So that means I have six divided by a plus four ax equals one divided by a minus ax. I do the cross product. It means six a minus six ax equal a plus four ax, all right? Um, so what does that mean? That means, you know, collect everything that includes x on one side and send everything else on the other side. So I'm gonna have 5a here equals six plus four ax means 10ax. Well, there you go, a is canceled out. So apparently initial wealth uh, didn't matter, uh, fine. Uh, but I needed an, an initial wealth. Um, so what else? I have uh, two here, one here. So that means x is equal one half. So that means, apparently, the optimal thing for this decision maker is to split his wealth equally between the bond and the risky stock. Um, and this is how we solve this question.